Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today, and his name is Spiro Colores, and he is here today. He's a dietitian, and he focuses on health, and he has other certain conditions that he focuses on, like gout and other issues, so we're going to talk about these things today, and so Spiro, can you tell us a little about yourself and what you do? Yeah, uh, well, uh, in my personal case i suffered from gout i got diagnosed at the age of 26 which is relatively young uh because usually gout affects folks uh, 50 and over i would say primarily men 75 percent men compared to 25 percent women mm -hmm. um and i had a small issue when i went to the doctor i was limping i remember and uh, i told him i must have broken a toe or something check it out but he quickly diagnosed me with gout i didn't understand what gout was he explained it to me i was pretty shocked yeah to get it at such a such a young age so i did my blood work and sure enough my uric acid levels were pretty high so i was diagnosed with gout and it hit me in my big toe usually it affects the big toe for the majority yeah. of people and then it went up to my big knee so i remember walking with crutches for about three weeks uh, trying to get rid of the pain and inflammation. So um, I got, di got diagnosed and I was looking online to find information about gout uh, and I couldn't find much. I remember I was overweight. Uh, that was part of the reason that I got an attack at such an early age. I was 50 pounds overweight. I used to love McDonald's, eating Big Macs, drinking lots of soda. Uh, and I, I've noticed after reading a, a bit that there wasn't that much dietary information. So yes. I start checking out the studies, the medical studies, and there was a lot done with diets mm -hmm. and what foods to eat and what foods to avoid. So I decided to uh, create a blog, uh, a website called gouttingyou.com. Uh, it's community-based uh, where um, I blog about what foods to eat and what foods to avoid according to research that I find online. Yes. Uh, and basically that's when I decided that I had to make big dietary changes in my life, big lifestyle changes, because if I wasn't, I learned that gout can lead to other complications down the road, like diabetes, it could lead to arthritis, um, high blood pressure, uh, and other uh, basically complications. So I had to take action. Um, and the part of the reason I got at such a young age, I had a bit of thalassemia. I was born with a bit of thalassemia, which is a blood disorder. Um, so that, uh, that's what my doctor told me is probably the reason I got gout at such a young age. So I had to make changes. So I had to drop the weight. So I started exercising, uh, moving more, uh, and then uh, changed, uh, what I eat. So in my book, uh, the, the ultimate gout diet, um, I basically discuss the ideal gout diet and break it down, uh, as eating 80% of your daily calories as complex carbohydrates. So that's basically uh, fruits, vegetables, legumes, 100% whole grain breads, 100% whole grain pastas, 100% whole grain rices, uh, beans for protein, uh, plant-based foods basically, and limit animal-based foods to 10% protein. So meat intake, uh, whatever meats you like, uh, beef, chicken, turkey, uh, fish, and so on. And 10% can be fat. Uh, as in uh, yogurt, eggs, butter, cheeses, and so on. So gout, uh, really, you got to be careful with animal-based foods because mm -hmm. animal-based foods takes longer for the kidneys to break down and process in the body. Right. Whereas complex carbohydrates like vegetables, it takes much less strain and less hours to break down. Uh, meat, for example, could take up to 90 hours for your kidneys to break down. So your kidneys work extra hard and that produces excess uric acid. Right. And when you produce excess uric acid, it crystallizes in the joints and then you get a gout attack and that's how you get a painful inflammation and you run to the doctor. So basically on my website, gouting.com and in my book, I outline what foods to eat, what foods to avoid, which ones produce higher uric acid than others and so on. Uh, but that's the basic breakdown of an ideal gout diet. Uh, that I uh, talk about in my book and website. Yeah, I, I find that, you know, a, a lot of people get affected by gout. And uh, it's funny when you mention the conditions, because, you know, my father suffered from arthritis, he suffers from high blood, high blood pressure, he suffered from diabetes, everything that you mentioned. Wow. And it seems like it's all intertwined, like one yes. 
it, it, it's kind of connected. Can you go a little into that and how, how they, why it's connected and, and why people sometimes when they have one condition like gout, it leads to other conditions? Well, it increases the risk because you're eating basically garbage. So when you eat garbage and you're not mm -hmm. taking, like, you're watching what you eat, uh, it'll, depending on your genetic makeup, you'll get uh, you'll get diagnosed with either disease, either diabetes first, maybe gout first, or vice versa, arthritis. And then if you continue that path of not eating well and changing your lifestyle uh, and not exercising. Uh, you're going to develop other diseases that come along with uh, gout, uh, diabetes, high blood pressure, and so on, arthritis. So um, I would say for gout sufferers, uh, number one is diabetes. Number two would be arthritis uh, that you're at higher risk of developing uh, if you don't take care of yourself. Um, so it's very important to make those lifestyle changes because um, at the end of the day, you can go on medication. That's fine. Uh, you can control it, but I, I even tell the folks that take medication and say, I could eat whatever I still want to eat. You're, what's going to happen is your doctor's going to elevate your prescription uh, over the years, and you're just going to uh, eventually, obviously, the kill, kidneys filter medication, right? And your kidneys could fail, and you could have kidney stones, you could have kidney disease, uh, and you don't want that. You want to uh, make that effort uh, and make that uh, lifestyle change uh, for the better, uh, and it's not going to happen overnight. It's a uh, work in progress day by day. You're going to fail like I did. And then you just get back up and you continue and you can, and you, you have to stay disciplined and discipline takes action on a daily basis. Uh, and eventually you'll get there. And uh, once you make those lifestyle changes, you won't want to go back eating uh, the crappy foods you were eating before. Uh, your palate will change. You'll prefer the healthier foods and uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel more energetic. Uh, and it's going to lead to positivity, uh, positivity all around in your life. I feel like a lot of those medications are so strong that they really, they really affect the person's health. And yeah, you know, I see a big difference in, in people who take those type of medications because they're so strong. And I, I sometimes I, I feel like they interact with each other also. And you see a person become very fatigued. You see sometimes you see person has increase in joint pain, and you know instead of really, you know, they think they're getting, they're helping themselves, but in, in a sense, they're making it worse for themselves when they could easily make some adjustments into their daily lifestyle and actually maybe help themselves get back on the track, yes. on the right track. Yes. Everybody has to make an effort. Uh, you have no choice. Uh, Cause medication, I mean, for gout, um, there's people that write me in and they tell me I'm off the medication, but you still have to be careful. I tell those people, listen, Gout usually is a disease you have for the rest of your life. Yes. Um, and uh, if you're not careful, um, make sure you monitor your uric acid levels very closely with your doctor at least two times a year mm -hmm. to make sure you don't get another gout attack. Because, I mean, I was, I'm on medication still because I want to avoid getting a gout attack, but I've decreased my 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 dosage so i started right. off 300 milligrams and now i'm down to 100 with uh, the dietary changes that i've made uh, but i still take that 100 milligrams of allopurinol to avoid uh, getting that painful gout attack that could last for weeks you know one of the things that we talked about right before we started the show that we were i was mentioning my father as an example and how when i looked up to foods that you, sh you should eat and shouldn't eat it was such a high list of foods that you, you sh they, they said you should stay away from. But you were yeah. mentioning that sometimes you could actually eat a lot of those foods along in moderation, as long as they're not, yeah. you're not overdoing it. Can you explain to that? I eat my things? steak. Yeah, I, I eat my steak uh, once a week. But uh, with meat intake, for example, because the number one gout trigger actually is alcohol. Watch out your alcohol intake. Uh, that's what got me in trouble. I used to drink a lot. And the night I got a gout attack, I was out drinking uh, lots of whiskey and Cokes. I remember, and I went back home, and at 3 a.m., I got my first gout attack. So alcohol, mm -hmm. you have to watch out. That's the number one trigger for gout. It raises uric acid levels tremendously high. Number two is meat intake. So I love my steak. I love my burgers, but I won't have them every day. I try to have a steak once a week, a burger every other week, and so on. And when I say 10% of your daily calories should can be meat, uh, that's about 8 to 16 ounces, uh, the size of your hand or your mm -hmm. palm. 
Yes. Um, so, and so you, that means you'll have it during one meal during the day out of the three meals, choose either lunch or supper to have that meat. And then the other uh, lunch or supper, you can have uh, a plant-based meal. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you want protein, include beans uh, and so on. So uh, and, and in my book and my website, I have lots of recipes that are plant-based. So uh, that could help you get started um, and cooking healthier. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say that's number two. Number three, seafood, avoid lobster, shrimp, crabs. Those raise uric acid levels very high. And then sugar intake. You got to watch out your sugar intake. I recommend 25 grams a day um, for gout sufferers. Um, so with sugar, especially, you got to watch out for high fructose corn syrup, mm. which is found in a lot of processed foods. Yes. So make sure you avoid that because uh, that's a big uh, trigger for gout. And number five, I would say, yeah, anything that's processed, so processed meats like hot dogs, salamis, uh, uh, processed snacks that you see in the grocery aisle and all that, avoid all that. Try and eat more uh, whole foods and more natural. Right. What do you think about the Mediterranean diet? Is that Because you mentioned a lot of carbohydrates, you know, that, that you should, you know, focus yeah. on. Um, yeah, well, it's very close. Yeah, it's very close. My ideal gout diet is very close to the Mediterranean diet. There's a lot of bean-based recipes, mm -hmm. a lot of plant-based recipes, fresh fish you could eat. Like I said, same thing with any type of meat, fish you, it has this high in purines. Um, purines, which is defined as, uh, it's found in every food. Yes. Uh, purines raise uric acid levels. So uh, meats have the highest uh, amount of purines, alcohol as well, uh, sugar. Uh, and then when you go to the plant-based foods, there's less purine. So that's what causes uric acid level to go high. So again, fish uh, is, some fishes are high in purines, moderately high. So I recommend, again, 8 to 16 ounces a day, not more than that. Uh, a fish, which is part of the Mediterranean diet, beans, uh, and more whole foods. That's what the Mediterranean diet uh, is famous for, is more uh, plant-based whole foods with a, a little bit of meat on the side. Yes, I, I think, you know, people have to realize how important it is everything that we put in our bodies has such an effect on the way we feel, on the way we act, mm -hmm. and even the way we yes. think. You know, when you put things into your body and your body doesn't recognize them, it, it can't break it down. And so when yes. it doesn't break it down, it stores it. And when it stores yes. it, you know, it affects our, our organs and it slows us down and it could affect the way we think and our fogginess and focus. And, yes. and um, you know, people have to really realize that they need to start checking the ingredients and really, like you said, you know, plant-based, you know, more natural, you know, really look at those ingredients. I think, you know, people have to really understand what they're putting in their bodies because a lot of times I think people look at the labels and the labels, you know, kind of, they kind of, I don't know if the word con is a, is the right word, but it disillusions people mm -hmm. and they think they're eating actually something healthy when it's something actually that's really processed. You're going to, you see a lot of those meals, you know, your healthy meals that you, that are in the frozen section and people are thinking, Oh, it's healthy for me and this and that, but it's, it's not, it's not natural food. It's not, it's not, you know, it's processed food and it's going into our bodies and it's not doing anything good. You know, what is your intake about some of the foods that we have in our, in our society, like those frozen foods and those, you know, um, you know, the foods you see, it's, you know, lean this or healthy this, you know, and, and then, you know, people are, are, you know, falling for it and, you know, and it's having a ne negative impact on people's bodies and they don't even realize it. Yeah, well, uh, like you said, check the labels. And if there are ingredients that you can't pronounce, and uh, that means it's highly processed, avoid it. Just leave it behind. Uh, you can probably find some frozen foods that are not highly processed. Uh, but again, read the labels, like you said, because uh, a lot of them are. Um, and uh, I would recommend if you buy frozen, buy the frozen vegetables. Those are... Uh, easy to uh, cook and you just boil them like right, like fresh beans, uh, long beans, uh, broccoli, and so on. Uh, but anything that's meal ready to go, make sure you check the ingredients, that's for sure. Because uh, chances are there's a lot of uh, ingredients that you can't pronounce and it's very highly processed and probably toxic for your health. Yeah, definitely. Right. And what would be your suggestion for when, when, when people are re eating unhealthy, how do they get back on track? Like, what are the first things they should start doing? Uh, 
I would recommend you start a diary. Start writing down every day what you eat and look at your patterns. See if you're trending uh, correctly. Uh, and uh, discipline comes with um, with thinking about what you eat when you go to the grocery aisle, what you're going to buy and prepare. So it does take a lot of uh, preparation. Uh, but it's slow and gradual because foods that are not healthy, like sugary foods, for example, are highly addictive, right? Mm -hmm. It affects uh, your brain, uh, just like cocaine does, right? Uh, it excites the brain. So um, to get off of those foods is going to take time and effort. So yeah. uh, what I recommend is don't buy it. If right. I don't have it in the in the cupboards, I'm not thinking about it. If I do and it's calling my name, chances are I'm going to eat it. So avoid yeah. that. Don't buy it. Uh, some other tips I would say is I love sugar just like anybody else but i'll have very minimal sugar so if i get that craving i'll have maybe uh, two tablespoons of ice cream and that's it uh, right. one little piece of chocolate just to get rid of that craving and you'll see it'll satisfy uh your most of the time your cravings uh, for sugar uh, just give it a little bit and um, your palate will change over time as you eat healthier and you'll notice it'll get easier and easier so uh, it's a work in progress, that's for sure. Yeah, I know when I got off of sugar, it was very hard in the beginning. It was kind of like getting off heroin in a sense, you know. But, yes, exactly. You know, but once I, I did it, I felt so much better. And after a while, I didn't like the taste of sugary things. So if I went out, let's say for dinner, and I had tasted a dessert, it was too sugary for me. Or if I had a mm. drink and it had a lot of sugar in it. I could yeah. taste the sugar and it kind of turned yeah. me off where yeah. it was the opposite back then. But all of a yeah. sudden I didn't, I didn't like it anymore after I didn't have it for a while. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like now I can't even have a, an entire Coke. I'll have one or two sips and that's enough for me. I can't have one. Yeah. After that, it gets too sweet. But uh, just to remind yourself how, how good it tastes, you just have that one, two sips, you get that craving, your brain gets excited and that's pretty much it. The craving's pretty much gone. Uh, nowadays from for myself when it comes to uh, soda and uh, sugary food and so on. Now, do you suggest any vitamins or supplements when people are suffering from either gout or if they're, you know, trying to improve their health? Is there anything that you, you yeah. like specifically? Yeah, well, uh, Gout and You, we have a brand. Uh, it's the number one brand in, on Amazon now and walmart.com. Uh, for gout supplements. So we have a popular pain relief cream, for example. So if you mm -hmm. get a gout attack, you apply that uh, four times a day to your affected joint and it helps soothe it. And we have NutriGout. NutriGout is basically a supplement that consists of ingredients that help cleanse the kidneys where uric acid is produced. So we're talking about turmeric root, uh, shanka piedra, bromelain, uh, celery seeds, which makes you pee more. Mm -hmm. uh, milk thistle, which helps with the liver and kidneys to cleanse it. So there's uh, those key ingredients. And uh, yeah, it's a top seller at Amazon. So we do have uh, uh, supplements, which I take as well uh, for uh, helping support healthy uric acid levels. Now that's great. And you can find all of this on Amazon? Yeah, Amazon, Walmart.com. Yeah. Now I know that you and have- our, uh, And our website. Yeah, I was going to say, I saw that you had a shop on your website. Yeah. Um, what is your website's address, by the way? Oh, goutingyou.com. Okay, goutingyou.com. Yeah. And your book, is it, your book all about recipes or does it give any advice? No, I, I, yeah, I give advice on what foods to eat and avoid. I go into more detail about the ideal gout diet, which I mentioned earlier, of eating 80% complex carbs, 10% fat, 10% protein. And then at the end, we got about 100 uh, recipes uh, to help you get started yeah. to uh, changing your lifestyle and eating better. And how, how have you seen, like when people start to change, is it a quick process or is it a slow process that you notice when people are suffering from gout and they start to start to change their, their diet? Are they, are they starting to feel changes little by little, or it takes the first three months to start to feel a little bit different? Yeah, I would say a few months. Yeah. Anywhere between one to three months for most. It is an adjustment. It, they, it, it doesn't happen overnight. There's nothing that works overnight. So um, if you're going to take that route of changing your habits, it's going to take some time. Right. And when you start to, when you start to eat right and you start to feel differently, um, the other conditions that we talked about, do they start to improve as well? Because I would. Yes, assume of course. 
So when I go to the, my doctor and I do my blood work, he tells me I have the best cholesterol he's seen. Really? Because uh, um, I, I, I only eat good fats, so olive oil, right? Extra yes. virgin olive oil mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So that all my foods are basically uh, when you cook or bake, uh, I don't fry. I don't eat no fried food. So that affects cholesterol. Yes. Um, so everything's baked, boiled uh, for us or barbecued, um, which is a great way to eat as well. And um, yeah, my cholesterol levels are the best you seen. So yeah, it does help with all areas, uh, other metrics of your health as well. Uh, sugar levels are low and so on yeah because that's great to know because when it comes to cholesterol cholesterol affects your heart as well and so many people in the united states alone suffer from high cholesterol and, and heart problems as well so it yeah. seems it yeah. seems like and with gout you're at a higher risk of a, a heart attack or heart disease so yeah you you have to really make those changes yeah, I think it's very important. Do you ever recommend a plant sterile? But it's not necessary because once you follow these diets, you'll naturally see a change in in your uh, in your uh, overall health. What was that? Plant sterile? Yeah. Which is? It's a it's a plant based. It's um it it helps with uh um it helps with uh, releasing the bad cholesterol in your body. So after a meal. A lot of times if people use a plant sterile, it will help yeah. with uh, releasing the bad cholesterol. Um, it will uh, it will release from your body and it will keep the good good cholesterol and the nutrients in your body, but it will release any types of bad cholesterol in your in your diet. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, I know that that has been been um, getting a lot of recognition. You know, a lot of people it's been here for thousands of years, but a lot of times people it hasn't really been talked about. So if you say the word plant yeah. sterile, most people yeah. don't know what it is. And I didn't even know what it was until the last two years ago when it was introduced okay. to me. And uh, I actually it helped me go down 41 points because I in my family, on my mother's side, we suffer from high cholesterol. It's genetically. Mm -hmm. And, and for me, no matter what I tried, no matter what I did, I couldn't get those, those numbers really? to go down. Yeah. Wow. So I started to take a, a plant sterile and it was just like after your big meals, you know, once or twice a day and it, it helped release the, the bad cholesterol. But it also, like you said, I had to, I had to change my diet. I had to get rid mm -hmm. of, you know, I had no sh fried food. I changed the, the shrimp. I used to love to eat shrimp. I kicked that out of my diet, you know, so it was like, I, even yeah. though I was a big fish lover, you know, sometimes you have to really realize what you're eating because certain fishes are high yes. in certain things and certain fishes yes. are better for you, like salmon and so forth. Yes, exactly. Salmon is an excellent choice. Uh, anything with um, uh, uh, fish with scales, those are the healthier fish to eat. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's it's very important, you know, for, for people to really, you know, because I, I see in our, our, our United States alone, we have our obesity has has gotten so yes. high and yes. and, it, and it's more accepted now where people should really be more concerned, you know, um, and the media tries to make it more like it's beautiful to be big, it's fine and this and that. But I look at it as like your health is at risk, you know. I don't care about the outside. I'm more, I'm looking at the inside and what it could actually do to you health wise. And, yes. uh, you know, we, and then diabetes has tripled in the last couple of years too, you know, and like yes. you said, it's all intertwined. It's, it's the foods we're eating. It's, and it's really, it's, it's the Western diet. You got to get out of that. That's too much meat, too much fat yeah. get, and too much sugar. Yeah. Exactly. And too much sugar. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's so important too. Like, I don't know how you feel about the 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 food industry in our United States, but I feel like a you know, a, if you go to Europe, a lot of the foods that are in Europe, um, they they ban a lot of the American foods. They won't let it yes. into Europe. Yes, exactly. You know? So there's less uh, antibiotics in the meats, uh, and, and the food tastes better. The meats, the fish tastes way better because they don't pump it with all these uh, chemicals and antibiotics uh, like here in North America. Uh, the eggs are different. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah, everybody will tell you that. Yeah, when when I went to Europe and I was eating the foods in Europe, I ate smaller portions and I got fuller fast. And yes. the food tasted; it was phenomenal. It would taste it so fresh. 
because they were using the foods from their backyards and, you know, yes. and it was all farm grown and backyard grown and you didn't really need a lot to feel full where it's, it's the opposite in the United States. You know, you have these yes. large portions when you go out to eat, people are overeating, not even realizing it, you know, because they're yep. not taking the time to eat. And then when these art, artificial ingredients are in this, these foods, you don't get that fullness effect so quickly like you do and they make you hungrier especially sugar when you eat sugar-based foods it makes you hungry so yes. you're eating more calories yeah a very good point it's very true because a lot of times people have very big appetites and sugar you know sugar makes you crave more sugar you yeah. know yeah and a lot of foods are, are created with sugar so how have you seen you know in, in with your patients and people you've worked with how are they how are they their lives improving by changing Oh, what people write in are basically, yeah, uh, they follow the gout diet. Um, a lot of them have changed their lives. Uh, they follow the advice and they're living a better life, a uh, better quality of life. So uh, it does work, uh, but it takes work. So as long as you're willing to do the work and have the discipline, uh, you will have succeed. Uh, and it's not that complicated. The formula is not that complicated. Um and I also recommend folks exercise because when you get gout attacks, it weakens the joints. Mm. Uh, so you want to rebuild those joints uh, by doing some weight training, uh, walking, a lot of walking, something cardiovascular to help uh, the heart as well. Uh, so exercise is also an important uh, routine uh, for the gout patient. Um, and I strongly advocate that uh, if they're, especially if they're overweight to lose uh, the excessive pounds and be their ideal weight and be that like that for the rest of their lives. So yeah, exercise is key as well. Do you suggest any amount of specific time or it's basically it depends on the person as long as you get maybe 15, 20 minutes or more, depending on how the age of the person, what do you recommend? I recommend, um, I would say weight training at least uh, three times a week. So 180 minutes uh, and the, the, every other day, try and walk 10,000 steps uh, every day. Get one of those watches that uh, measures the steps you take. Um, yeah. But if you want something more intense, do some cycling. I recommend cycling uh, and swimming compared mm -hmm. to running because running, uh, jogging too much could also affect the joints. And for gout sufferers, that could uh, trigger gout attacks. So something like swimming uh, doesn't impact the joints at all. Right. So, and it's a great cardiovascular exercise. Um, so yeah, try and mix it up. But whatever you like, do whatever you like and enjoy. If that's playing tennis and play a few hours of tennis a week, if you prefer basketball, play some basketball, but make sure uh, you get that heart pumping. Yeah. Um, but I, I, for gout sufferers, you have to do some weight training. If you don't enjoy it, just even a few barbells at home while you're watching TV, just a few exercises right. uh, to keep your joints stronger and in shape. It's funny because when I did, I did aerobics in the pool and you don't really feel the intensity when you're doing yes. it in the pool. It, it feels a lot easier when you're doing it in the water itself. It's mm. funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, and they even say walking is actually better than running and, and jogging. That's yeah. better for your body. And you could. Yeah. And the lower impact on the joints. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, if you had to like sum it all up and like explain and emphasize some important factors about what we talked today, what would you like to tell the audience so they really understand um, some important factors on what they need to start doing for themselves and things that you want to really get across to them? Well, for gout, I would recommend uh, you visit my site, goutingy.com, uh, read my book, uh, the ultimate gout diet, start there to understand what the ideal gout diet consists of and how do you break down your calories every day. That's step number one. Step number two, go to the grocery store and sh start shopping healthier foods and start preparing healthier foods. We have recipes to get you started in the book and on the website. Uh, it's not that difficult. A lot of these recipes take less than 30 minutes. So start eating better. Uh, number three, Start exercising. If you're obese, overweight, make sure you start losing those pounds. You'll feel better. Your uric acid levels will drop. Uh, so very important. Choose whatever you like, whatever sport it is, gym, uh, and so on. Uh, the steps, walking every day. Um, find something. If you have any questions, email me. I'm available every day. I answer all the emails. 
um, and I can help you guide you. And that's pretty much it. And then maybe start a diary if you're into it, if you have the time, and start writing uh, what you did uh, and follow it. See, look at trends and of your eating habits, uh, maybe write down also your exercise habits and look at the progress you're making. Uh, and that's going to motivate you to continue uh, towards that path of uh, feeling better. And once you start feeling better, uh, your entire life will change. You'll be sleeping better. You'll be feeling more positive, uh, more energetic. Uh, you will be more focused at work. Uh, so it's a win-win all around. Yeah. But you got to do some work in the beginning and change your lifestyle and say no to the bad stuff and start incorporating and consuming the good stuff. Uh, and you'll see, you'll be a changed person for sure. And I like the idea about the food diary, because I feel like a lot of times we overlook and we don't realize what we're eating until we actually look, see it on paper. And then we're like, wow, I didn't realize I consumed that much food or, you know, it really yeah. wasn't great for me to eat that like three days in a row or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And this uh, will provide more clarity uh, and bid the uh, focus on your direction. But also for gout sufferers, you want to see if there's any food that bothers you as well. So mm -hmm. if you notice a flare up uh, coming up, uh, you could see in your diary what you've eaten in the past week and see what may have caused that. And then you could avoid that food and remove it from uh, your diet. Uh, so that's uh, important as well, because sometimes gout sufferers are confused when they get a gout attack. They don't know if it was the meat, if it was the alcohol, if it was the seafood that they ate that past uh, few days. So yeah. a diary will help pinpoint that. Now, when when you have flare ups, like, can you, can it not just be in the foot? Because like, sometimes I see with, when it comes to people that have gout, they get food flare ups, but they might have, it looks like an allergic reaction and it look you know, is it because it's a food allergy yeah. or is it because it, it maybe it, it has to do with the condition of gout? Uh, no, with gout, 50% of the time is going to be in the big toe. So it starts at the lower extremities. Got it. And as gout progresses, if you don't take care of it, it starts going up in the body. So it'll go to the ankle after that. Your next attack might be in the uh, ankle, then in the knee. Okay. Then it goes up to the elbows. And then it could go up to even your back. Uh, really? That gets dangerous. That gets dangerous. If uh, that means you're not taking care of your gout, you're either not uh, changing your diet, you're not taking medication, you're refusing to treat yourself. Uh, and that could lead to a uh, uh, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, uh, TOFI. TOFI is um, thick, thick uric acid liquid that will form in your fingers or other parts of your body that will stick out uh, okay. in balls, uh, kind mm -hmm. of like warts. Uh, that's very rare, but when it does happen, it's extremely painful. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's it's imperative that you uh, make those changes uh, and get started today. If you know anybody suffering from gout, uh, point them to this uh, podcast interview yes, and uh, 100%. help them uh, change their lives. Yeah. Because I know for some people, when you hear gout, you think of the big toe, but I've heard people get flare ups in different parts of their body. And you said it could happen, you know, you have to look back the past week. So it doesn't really necessarily mean it could be the food that you ate yesterday or a couple hours ago. It could be something that you ate a couple of days yeah, ago too. Exactly. It could be a buildup of what you ate. That's a good point. Cause I don't think people yeah. think realize that they look, what did I eat yesterday? But they yeah. don't realize that it could be from a couple of days ago and it's actually exactly. affecting them now. Exactly. That's a great point. Yeah. Some people will tell me I eat chili and it got cause a gout attack. So the beans are bad. I'll say, did you have beef in it? Yes. Well, that's probably the cause, not the beans. It's probably the beef. So yeah, that's right. why a diary is important. Uh, pinpoint yeah. that. I like, I like having food diet. I think it's very effective. Very, very effective. Yeah. That's a great point. I like that idea. This has been amazing. You know, tell everybody once again, your website. Yeah, you could check me out at goutandyou.com. Uh, if you have any questions, email me at info at goutandyou.com. I answer all questions within 24 hours, and I could help you uh, get started uh, on this new journey. And you have three different supplements that you offer, one for gout. One for yeah, I have um, the pain relief creams. Uh, there's two of them, extra strength and regular, NutriGout. There's also NutriGout Plus, which is a stronger uh, version of NutriGout. Uh, with even more ingredients and a bigger capsule. 
Uh, there's tart cherry extract. This cherries mm. studies have shown help uh, support healthy uric acid levels. But unfortunately, you only have fresh cherries during the summer. So the rest of the year, you can pick right. tart cherry extract. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's great. This has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Before we go, is there anything else that you'd like to emphasize or tell the tell the listeners? No, if you uh, just get started today, if you're listening to this and you know somebody's suffering from gout, and uh, hopefully um, we could get people changing uh, their health and their and their lives. That's great. And are you just a specialty in gout, or you really you you have you work with a lot of other different conditions also? Oh no, just gout. Uh, I provide information. I do research on a weekly basis on gout, and uh, that's my main focus. Excellent. This has been great. Thank you so much, Spiros, for coming on the show. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. You All have right. a great day. You too.